Hey y'all, this is Jay Roo. So I wanted to talk about real life or substitute for real life. So you have you have people out there that live in I, I would call it a substitute for real life, quote unquote. It's basically, you know, living in a virtual world, whether that be on the computer or in, um, reading comic books, ima you know, imagination, even, you know, fantasy like uh, science fiction or uh, video games or, you know, any number of other things that are a substitution for reality or they're an alternate reality or alternate uh, life or whatever and I just want to say I'm not condemning or um, bashing you know gamers or you know dudes that play Dungeons and Dragons or um, Second Life or any, you know any sort of virtual thing like that I'm just uh, you know, it's an occurrence and it's observation that's, that that stuff's out there and it's popular enough that, you know, that a lot of people are doing it. So it makes me curious, what's the appeal, what's the, hey buddy, what's the appeal, what's the, um, the draw to that, um, what, what's the reasoning behind it? Um, and, you know, like... I don't live myself 100% in the real world. I, you know, there's a sidecar. BMW with a sidecar, it's pretty sweet. You know, I watch science fiction movies. Um, of course, the, the diehard sci-fi sci guys would be like, oh, J.J. Abrams, Star Trek, you know, that's not real. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's art imitates life I guess but like uh, you know and I, I play computer games or you know when I was growing up I'd play PlayStation Xbox stuff like that but I'm not advocating I guess a total withdrawal so having said all that uh, I'm not trying to bash or come down on gamers or whatever but there are definitely a there's definitely a draw for that, an appeal for that, because there's a lot of people playing games, and there's a lot of people that are receiving their satisfaction, gratification, uh, through pornography, or through virtual, or substitute for, substitute for the real thing. Whether that be sex, entertainment, whatever it is, there's it's available out there to substitute uh, those desires, interests, pleasures and substitute the original real thing and then and re replace them with an alternate alternative to that so it makes me just wonder where what makes that draw what what brings that and makes it appealing um, because you know obviously there's different levels of there's different levels of involvement in those sort of things so I, you know I'm just curious I, I'd like to know what people think about that what people um, what their motivation and desire is you know some people just do this stuff as as a habit it's just something they, they've always done like I know guys that play video games and the reason why they play video games is because they've always played video games. Um, it's it's kind of like uh, the thing they go to. It's kind of the same thing with, with pornography. Like I know there's guys out there that have uh, that that you know look at porn and, and get involved in in uh, subscribing or view, you know cam girls and all this other stuff. But like they're they are uh, choosing to to do that um, and I think part of that is there's a segment of those people that do that because 
it's something they've always done, you know, like it's it's a habit, and you know, kind of like some people, like their default thing is to to pick up a cigarette and smoke a cigarette. Um, it's not that they are receiving, you know, the utmost pleasure that they could receive from it. But they are, it's, it's what they do, it's, it's habitual because it's like the default go-to thing for them. So, anyway. But what about people who are substituting reality for alternate reality um, in other cases? In not because of an addiction or a habit or whatever, but it's just, uh, it's an interest. It's like they would, there are people out there that would rather choose to live in the alternate reality. Like if that was, if they could choose between uh, live in real life or cho choose between this alternate life, they would choose the alternate life because it's, it's better. And, uh, and, and I guess I could totally understand why, because life is hard, life is difficult, life is, um, you know, it, sometimes it's a struggle. There's definitely moments where you're, you're, you know, living on top of the mountain and you're feeling on cloud nine and you're just enjoying life and, and all that stuff. But then there are definitely times uh, where life is a struggle, life is difficult. Um, you know, I think everybody just about at some point in time deals with uh, those moments, with depression, with uh, some sort of trial in their life they have to go to, uh, go through some sort of adversity. But you think about that adversity, like the adversity that you face in life is what hardens your character, what... Um, causes you to grow and to to avoid that, to go into an alternate reality and to avoid that, to choose, willingly choose that reality over over facing your adversity, uh, it cripples you. I think it really cripples you and makes, hello people, it cripples you, it limits your your growth as a person and um, kind of kind of shelters you from the the things that you need to experience in life. Um, you know, I think our society is is a lot different than it was, you know, 50 or 100 years ago. And it's not just because we have technological advancements to make life easier. Um, not necessarily simpler, but make life easier. Um, but we have... We coddle people. We cause... Uh, you know, maybe coddle is not the right word. Maybe coddle is the right word. But we have people who have no clue how to fend for themselves or survive on their own or how to, uh, to to play well with others or you know we have we have people who are very very different than the last generations of people say the last ten generations um, and I, you know I'm not trying to bash on Millennials because part of it is not their fault but um, you know, you, you're dealt with what you're dealt with, and you have to you have to choose to make something of your situation. Whether you whether it's a crappy situation or whether it's a good situation, you still have to. Um, you, you know, you can't just sit and blame others for your for your failures. You have to you have to own up to it, and part of that is facing difficulties, and then. Um, working through them instead of you know living in an alternate reality so I'm I'm curious I'm curious to know what other people think about uh, all that I just said about 
live in alternate reality and uh, you know maybe maybe you're one of those persons that that chooses um, chooses that path of, of living in al alternate reality versus uh, facing adversity or facing the life as as it is the toughness of life as it is so yeah I'd like to hear from you I'd like to you know comment on the YouTube page or uh, or message me or whatever you know I'd like to hear some feedback what people think and uh, you know there's people from all different walks of life people from all different generations and uh, you know there are men that are 45 50 years old that um, that are out there that you know still live a life that resembles an adolescent boy you know they, they didn't they have avoided um, avoided all this and this difficulty of real life and somehow you know they manage but anyway I'm just uh, I'm just curious I don't think it's just millennials that face this I think everybody faces it it's uh, we have a tendency to want to take the easy route and uh, and the easy is not always the best um, so anyway yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what uh, what you say about that. I'd like to I'd like to hear from you and uh, know what you think, because uh, you know I'm just one man. I have my opinions, and um, I know that there are people from different walks of life and um, people who I guess are more realists than I am and then there's people that are more more delving into the the alternate realities of life uh, whether that be through social media, or whether that be through uh, fantasy, sci-fi, or gaming, pornography, what, whatever it, it would be, um, yeah, I'd like I'd like to hear what you have to say, and um, of course keep it civil. Obviously, no no crazy talk, no bashing or. Um, But, you know, there's nothing wrong with hearing someone else's opinion and then recognizing, acknowledging their, their opinion. And, it, you know, if you don't believe it, you don't have to silence or oppose someone else's opinion. Um, that's, I see that a lot nowadays, especially on social media. And there's some cars see that on social media and like uh, it's just not right you know to to have your opinion stifled because someone doesn't agree with it that's uh, that's like you know that's what they do did in Nazi Germany or something so you know it's it's wrong but anyway yeah, let me know what you think. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'll talk to you all later. This is J. Rue signing off.